I'm reading, dear. I know, but look at me. I am preparing for a class, dear. I know, but just take a look. Well, well. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. Why have I never noticed before? Because I wear loose fitting clothes, large, shapeless flannel nightgowns. That's true. I've got to teach a class in an hour. Oh, yeah, and I've got to go to my meeting. Yeah, I know. The thing is, how would I put this? Speak frankly. The thing is that you and I haven't made love very much. Recently. Is that true? Oh, I think it is. Not very much, not recently. Define recently, please. Well, well, I mean five years, more or less. <laughs> Give or take a month or two. And so you mind, obviously. Oh, no, no, no. Why should I mind? Well, then... Oh, I see now. What you're really saying is that someone else might yeah, have just this impregnated nice you. With you got to go teach. Yes, when you go out to your meetings. Yeah, exactly. I should have made love to you more. Oh, no, no. But why haven't we? Well, you used to laugh too much, maybe. Laugh? Yeah. Whenever we started to make love, you start to chuckle. But it's okay, I was just as bad. Did you chuckle? No, actually, I cry. <laughs> But now there's this. Keep it. Bear it. Bring it home. Oh, darling. You give it my name, consider me its father. <sighs> but now I really have to prepare for my class. Oh, yeah, and I've got to go to my meeting. What if it turns out to be black? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you still act as its father if it's Black. <laughs> Black. Yeah. Well, I could still adopt it. The real father might object. If he know. Oh yeah. He'll be back. After I'm home from hospital, I'm capable of sexual intercourse again. What about your class? Sweetheart, sit down. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't sit down. You feel that? Oh, I will remove my feet. Now sit down. All right, I'll sit down. And don't look at me. Don't look at me. Face forward, oh, because right. this is going to be hard for both of us, okay? All right, I, I won't look at you. Okay. To begin with, I've been lying to you this evening. Lying? Yes, lying. I don't have a class tonight. I've never had a class at night. I don't believe in evening classes. <laughs> and darling, save your comments and remarks for the end, all right? Thank you. You may well ask, therefore, where I go on these nights when I say I have classes. And that is what is so difficult to tell you. The thing is, I don't leave this house. Not really. I leave by the front door, all right, but then I immediately circle around in back and go down into the cellar. Oh, yeah, I see. Now, what do I do in a cellar? You're probably asking yourself that. What do I do in a cellar? But I will tell you. I make my way to a small space behind the furnace, and in that small space I have hidden, let's say, certain things. What have I hidden? I will tell you. Some black theatrical makeup, a woolly wig, a complete change of clothes, and a small mirror. That's what I have hidden in the cellar. Yeah. <sighs> yes, yes, darling. And when I go into the cellar, I doubt myself from head to toe with the dusky makeup. I glue on that curly wig, don those makeshift clouds, leave the cellar, go to the front door, ring the bell, and reappear to you. So you see, my good darling, I am your black visitor, and have been all along. You? Me! But... But why? Because I wanted to make love to you, and somehow this seemed to be the only way I could do this. You have to admit, it worked. Oh yeah, it worked. I'm somewhat stunned by all this. I know you are, darling, I know. But now, 
Try to assimilate it while I'm gone, okay? Gone? I must leave you now. <laughs> Never! I must, darling, give my child a normal home. Normal? What is normal? You're normal, my love. Me? Oh my god, how little do you know? Sit down. I have a tale to tell you. Nothing you could say. Sit down! Nothing you could say. I've known all along you were my dark lover. You've known? From the beginning. But how? Oh, five years ago, when you announced that you have settled some evening classes, I became suspicious and I followed you. Followed me? Yes, I spied on you, my darling. Furtively, suspiciously, like some aging matron. But when I saw what you were doing, when I understood that you were doing it for me, my heart went out to you. I dashed back upstairs. I was terrified that you would see that I recognized you so. I dimmed the lights to make things easy for both of us. Well, I thought it was because you were romantic. Oh, I know you did, darling, and I let you think it, but no. So, you were acting like the whole time? Yeah, wasn't I good? It's hard to believe. <laughs> At first I was terribly excited, but... But then... Everything changed. What do you mean? I was a tiger. Oh, darling, you were. You were a tiger, but... But I wasn't. You said you loved me. I really hated you. Hated me? Hated myself. It was awful. I had to play. Fake, to pretend. It felt like an object. So, for the past five years, you've been through hell? No. No? I suffered nothing after that first ghastly evening. But then, who was there with me? I got a substitute. I see. Oh, darling, try to understand. I could simply not endure another evening like that. That sham, that pretense, it revolted me. And yet I knew how much it meant to you. All the next day, I was trying to figure out something which would satisfy us both. I took a long walk. A nicer woman who looked a little like me. Same hair, same height, roughly the same age. It was a little chance. Before I really knew what I was doing, I asked her whether she'd like to sleep with a black guy. <laughs> Naturally, she said she would. And so now, for the past five years, this good woman has come here while you were in the cellar, putting her clothes, and in the dim light, she has been pretending to be me. What about this? Ah, this? Yes, that. Who says that? Now, bear with me, darling. On these nights, I go walk with a real black guy. There it is, in a natural I sneak out and ride off with him in the black ghetto. I felt that with him, I am expiating not only my own guilt, but the guilt of all men. So he is the father of that? No. No? No. Somehow, even that relationship wasn't enough. Somehow, in the ghetto, with all that soul music pulsing around me, all that frustration, all that anger, I still felt as if I were not playing my part, so I betrayed my lover for another one. And another. Oh, darling, for the past five years, I've been offering myself as an ecstatic white sacrifice to anyone with an income of less than 5,000. So the father is... Social injustice on a large and general scale. <laughs> and now, and now you'll leave me, won't you? Me? Leave you now? I want to stay more than ever. <sighs> Somehow, everything you've told me... 
excites me, sets my blood boiling, gives me a wild presence of desire. <sighs> Darling, what would you say if I said that I suddenly want to exercise something like a droit de seigneur on you? That I want to steal you from your peasants and carry you into my bedroom? What would you say if I said that? I'd say... Do it. Oh, <laughs> but, but wait, there's still this, this, this problem. That's no problem. <clears throat> It's not a problem? No, that's not a real baby you have in there. <laughs> not really a baby? No, that's a balloon you have in there. It's a baby, I'm practically positive! No, no, look, I will show you. <laughs> Aren't we awful? You started it. You started the last one. Oh, but we're happy. Oh, but we're so depressed. Oh, darling. <sighs>